Um, I no, thought it agree. was a 2019 Australian Shiraz, so, yeah. Whoa! Shiraz! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Woo! G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Blind Tastings. Big thank you as always, and sometimes always, for hooking us up with these six wines. They actually sent us over the uh, list of wines that we've tasted on the show so far. And there's 328 of them. So, uh, happy 329th, 30th, 31st. That, uh, we're doing some more. Um, I still don't know anything about this, which is really, really average. My primary school teacher could have told them that, like, doing lots of study isn't going to be good for me. Big shout out to all of our international listeners. It's been really cool seeing people in the Discord being like, oh, I'm tuning in from Sweden, I'm tuning in from Denmark. Drop a comment down below. If you're watching from somewhere other than Australia, let, let us know where you're watching from, because I think it is literally nuts that someone in Denmark could be watching me, me of all people, talk about these quality of wines. And as always, guys, if you could drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, that's the best way to help us out. We are steadily growing here, but, you know, we're on a rocket ship to the moon. Be nice to get to the moon a little bit quicker. I've seen Apollo 11. Um, but without further ado, we'll get into tasting these wines. Now, I had a really good night's sleep last night. My brain is on fire, so I'm going to nail all of these today. Watch this. It's a lovely, medium, ruby looking red wine. Obviously, it's a red to start out with, um, so I'm thinking Chardonnay Rouge off the bat. Oh my god, I washed my hair last night. This is gonna be a problem. Hang on, just do a quick uh, readjustment, otherwise, there's gonna be hair in the boys' wines. Natural color, by the way, anyone who doubts it. All right, wine number one. Juicy, but like rich and opulent, but it's, it's still light on its feet. It's kind of got everything going for it. Damn. Whew, far out. That is that is amazing. That is a cracking wine. Well, interesting wine and a real vexing wine. When we start these lineups, sometimes I really hope there's like like a really evident like Pinot or a Grenache or something like that that um because it set the tone for this. This is a Goldilocks wine. That is beautiful. So this might be my favorite big red wine that we've had on the show. Like this is really cool. A, a Syrah or a Shiraz because it does have that little bit of sort of like heat and spice. I want 12 of them. That's sick. And I reckon that's money. I reckon that is a $85 bottle of red. I have a feeling that's some like awesome burgundy. Whoa. Let's fucking go. Moving on to, looks like Barocca. Looks like, looks like Barocca. Hydrolite. Straight away. Not into it. Don't like the smell of this one. Um, it's a little bit public restroomy, I suppose I would say. I can smell, you can smell the tannins. It's got that kind of peach fuzz character. Bergamot, yeah, Earl Grey tea, black tea, really vibrant, lovely aromatics. And once again, it tastes fantastic. Oh my God, this always happens. Like I, often things taste better than they <laughs> smell, smell worse than they taste. Awesome. Oh, salivating, salty. I can't, I'm gonna put a little note here. If this is not grown near a large body of salt water, I would be surprised because this is a fa fantastically salty. That tastes lovely. Uh, it's kind of like a, if you went to a if you went to like a fancy restaurant and they didn't have any soft drinks on the menu, but they had like a house lemonade infused with rose or something like that. It's got this really lovely. Don't smell it. Fuck. Wow, that's a kumquat. Tastes like kumquat. Like really little juicy, like tropical fruits. There's like pawpaw in there. There's guava, there's mandarin. Wow, that is awesome. Um, and clean, super crisp, super clean, super driven, will still giving the effect and the appearance of, of having a voluptuousness to it. Uh, 12 bottles and I would drop $48. Wine number three. White wine, looks pretty classic. We've got three more traditional looking wines to finish off with. This one, pretty clear. Immediately Riesling comes to mind. Uh, honeyed, uh, citrusy, lime zest, lemon juice. Wow, not sweet. Definitely on the lower scale of ripeness though. And so I still think this is Riesling or a Riesling-esque something or other, but that is that is fascinating. Rizza, um, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I was looking for a little bit more uh, sort of tartness and citrusy and uh, acidity, but then it's got that little bit of oak, which is maybe making me think it's Chardonnay. It's Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Brio of 12 to start us off. Another absolute belter. Lovely, chewy, mealy, kind of toasty, nutty character there as well. That kind of makes me feel like it's not from not a Riesling, could be something like Suave or even Chablis. I would drink that every day of the week and it's just a nice, easy drinking wine. It'll be gone before you know it. Uh, 12 bottles and I would hope, uh, I would hope to spend around about 28 a bottle for it. 25, 25 a bottle for it. Yeah, three bottles and 30 bucks a bottle, I reckon, for that one. Or is it Riesling? Nah, fuck it, we're done. 
at number four, a bit of a more yellow colored white wine here. A bit more texture and a bit more skin contact, a little bit more ripeness. Whoa, yeah. Hell yeah, it's like creme brulee. That's awesome. Caramelized and whatnot. This is, this is gonna be a big one. We'll see. Damn. Woo, cool. All right, I've got some burgundy vibes. Yum! Whoa! This tastes like this tastes like a winemaker has let their seven-year-old child decide on the flavor profile of the white wine. This is so lolly. -y. It's like so yummy. Oh my god! What a snack! Right out of the textbook, Chenin Blanc with texture, acidity, opulent fruit character, very tropical, very ripe, and with a nice kind of savory nuttiness. Yeah, that's that is up my alley. I love this kind of wine, and I think this will age really well. It's got a really long finish, and those kind of like nutty, honeyed, toasty characters kind of push it along and it's got great lifted acidity. This has me back in the throes of winter, so I'm gonna buy six bottles of it. It's got nothing to do with the quality of the wine. The quality of the wine is very, very good. I think there's some money. There's a bit of ching ching that's been thrown at this wine. Uh, so I'm gonna say it's around about 60 bucks. That is fucking fantastic. That If that's Chardonnay, that's what they should be trying to make all the time because like it has, it didn't even occur to me that that could be Chardonnay until right at the end where it was like, oh no, but that does have oak and that does have butter, but it's all just like so beautifully integrated that it ends up tasting like, like milk and honey. Honey, oh, yum. Number five, lighter bodied red than the first one, but still gives me the similar kind of vibes. Kind of nice. Another cheeky little red, faded rim, hopefully not filtered, doesn't really look like it. Uh -huh. <laughs> that smells beautiful. Oh my goodness. Smells like a big, bun big bunch of, um, what are those purple flowers? Not lavender, violets. Man's given out uh, Valentine's Day cards before. Violets, that smells like a big bunch of violets. Probably not Gamay, it's got this very savory character there as well. It feels very, feels Italian. Could be Nero. Could be like a Nero or a Norello Mascalese or a Frappato or some kind of. Damn, I reckon that's Grenache. I think it's Grenache. I think it's really yummy. Like really like gluggable yummy. That's excellent as well. What's going on? Why? Are... Again, I told you it was Friday, but this is popping off. This is sick. Yeah, yum, great, fantastic. Uh, again, not a medium body, medium weight wine. There's a little bit more going on. Uh, I think it's not an Aussie varietal this time. I think it might be something more like a, maybe like a Sangio or something like that. I'll stick with Sangio. I'll have 12 of that one as well. And I reckon that's a $50 bottle of wine. But it's got that Sicilian influence and it's really high quality. It's got some, it's got some alcohol to it, but. I think it's great, so cracking job. Last and honestly, hopefully not least, but maybe had just that level of quality. Ooh, fun. Muted nose. It's almost Shannon like Fiano like Smells like goon. That genuinely smells like the epitome. Yeah. Okay. I genuinely think that <laughs> It tastes like, it's not the classic dry white, dry white, that is a soft fruity white. Um, I'll have a stab at producer. Wow, I've just realized for the first time in my wine, mate, wine drinking career, I don't have boxes of goon, uh, golden, golden oak. I can't remember what goon's called, I've grown up. Uh, look, it's not, it's, there is in no way, shape or form is this a bad wine. It is a neutral textural white with a little bit of acidity, a nice deal of structure, a nice grippy tannin, but anything further than that, it's not the most captivating thing in the world. Unfortunately, swallowing that, it's Friday. Holy shit, that's awesome. Wow. Um, okay, that's gonna be my wine of the week. That is, uh, I'll just have a bottle of it. Um, and I reckon, so it's gonna be the same price as petrol in 2035, so about six bucks a litre. Yeah, I like the peachiness. I love that minerality. I love that um, that savouriness. Aromatically, it's quite nice, but it just needs more oomph behind everything. This wine attacks the palate in such a perfectly uniform way. The uh, astringency and bitterness is balanced. Acidity is dropping off in perfect balance with the amount of fruit that's sitting in it. I'm even salivating. I believe that this is one of the most perfect wines we've actually tried on the show. It's just, and this is a hard thing to, to understand, bear with me, it is um, boring. Perfect is boring, but it's really hard to recognize when everything is in balance and nothing is sticking out about anything. I'm de This is stonkingly good and an absolute sleeper of a wine. I don't think we've seen something in what, 300 wines we've tasted on this show? I don't think we've seen something like that before. That's very cool. Let's see what the guys think. Great six wines. Awesome. awesome. Huge. Really cool. Water. Yeah, loved it. Um, Love it. A couple of, there was two of these on here that if they are what I think they are, they're my favorites of that style of wine that we've ever had on the show. Great. Okay, there is one wine on here that I've said is probably one of my favorites on the show. Period. All right, let's, yeah. let's find out if that's, if we're on the same page here. We'll start out with wine number one. Mm-hmm. This is sick. Yes, loved it. This I'm, is yes. so incredible. Cool. Yeah. Incredible wine. Um, yeah. 
Obviously, like, I'm drinking light to medium reds usually. I don't think that this is light or medium. I think that this is, like, it's a bigger grape varietal than, like, a pin. I don't think it's Pinot Noir, for example. Like, I don't I think it's sitting in the I personally think it might be. Fuck me, I don't understand <laughs> what we're doing here. I, I went 65, and I'm happy to pay more. It's an absolute 12-bagger. No yeah, 12 bagger on my front. Yeah, I had 12. I had it for 85 bucks. I'm gonna try. So I thought it was expensive. I think we just not in agreement. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I not thought it was a 2019 Australian Shiraz. So, yeah. How much was it? No. Nice. Hey, well done. Price Straight out of the gate. Right. Price is right out of the gate. What do we got? Whoa! Shiraz! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Woo! Oh my that was god! Fun. It's well, been so well, long! Oh my god! We, we need the... We need, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. it. Oh. Holy shit! Oh, well done! So, that is all class. I'd like to thank you guys for teaching me everything I know about wine. Uh, yeah, my dad. Yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, let's that go! That is such a good wine. I mean, wrong year, but... That is that is a uh, McLaren Val Shiraz that tastes like Burgundy. That tastes like fine burgundy. That is incredible. Like Grand Cru burgundy. Well, so yeah, basically it's like, it's not too oaky because it's in these massive 3,000 litre like Food French oak barrels. Yeah. Holy fuck, that's crazy. It yeah. doesn't have any of that like iron, iodine, bloody McLaren Val Shiraz character. <laughs> Dude, when you, when you were saying all those varietals, I looked at Lockie and he had this smirk on his face. I'm like, I could be on here. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> wine number two. Yes, cool. Interesting. Skinsy White. Loved it. Skinsy White, super clean, super crisp, did everything, ticks all the boxes really really well i hope it's changed what it smells like because it smelled like shit when i first tried it oh. it smells like like some dropped form of like tropical fruit that's just been on the like a fruit bat's come and it's just still yeah. hanging on the tree dealio yeah 100 yeah bird pecked nectarines yeah yeah totally. yeah that's actually a better yeah i said mm. that it smelled like a public restroom that's been like eight out of ten cleaned uh style of wine's less mine so i only wanted six of them but mm -hmm. 40 bucks a bottle uh, I wanted 12, I, want, I would be happy to pay 80 bucks, I reckon it's like Ooh. Italian level. 48 and 12. Nice. Ooh, right in the slot. Nice. Very what do we stuff. got? Ruckus, this is Jean Seriously? Potil. This is Jean Potil. Yeah, right. Sick so label. This, this is another level. Is that super bitsy down the bottom as it well? Yeah, some yeah, titrating yeah. drop out. Oh, yeah. so, so another uh, new, new blood from the basket range. Yeah. Um, worked with uh, Anton von Klopper. For a, for a while. He's done some stuff with BK as well. Yeah. Uh, I would never say that was going to come from him. From seeing the wines that he's put out, that yeah. is another level. Yeah, yeah, that's like Adelaide Hills, no sulfur, organically farmed, hands off, like crazy level of like hardcore natural winemaking. And that's at, at the top tier of some of the best and, and Australian orange wines. was it? 39, 39. bucks. I like, get massive like rip curl in the mid nineties vibes from the label as well. The like Absolutely. wavy and the fading up. That's Ab a real, I really like that yeah, label. Yeah, it's a mambo label. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's very cool. Um, well done, dude. Well, That's an absolute nice. cracker. That is yeah. so so. And cool. wine number three. Uh, I was going back and mm. forth on this one so much. Yeah. I smelled it and was like riesling. Then tasted Same. it and was like yeah. chardonnay. And then Same. I was like, no, maybe it's riesling. I, mm. I ended up going with chardonnay though. I had twelve bagger. I did the same thing. I did the exact same thing, Riesling, then tasted it, and I was like, oh, that's weird, because it smelled like what was going to be an underripe sweet. Yeah, Riesling. yep. Wasn't sweet. No. Also didn't have acid, so how could it be an underripe Riesling with no acidity? So that put me into this sort of like suave-ish territory. The cool thing, though, the thing I love about this, is it does what other wines kind of don't do, is that it doesn't shy away from underripeness. But yeah, 30 bucks. Uh, I went 12, I would be happy to pay about 45. Ooh! Springtime wine, springtime wine. Spring. Hey, Mac the guy with Macabeo! Mac Holy shit! Fucking bayo. That is the the most underripe Mac. Well, I suppose Macabeo is uh, turned into um, Carver. Yep. He's one of the main uh, it varieties. It's got Carver vibes. Uh, so yeah, it, it is lots of underripe uh, Macabeo is 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 um, uh, harvested every single year, like like yeah. a lot. Uh, metric boatloads of the stuff. Um, Never seen it, not really sparkling, not really in this style before. Mm -hmm. I'm I might be getting some Macabeo yeah, in That's these are some really quality value summer. wines. These are like you don't have to look far uh, over the sea to find some really fantastic wines. So this is this is killer. Really yeah. big fan. Wine number four. This was sick. Yeah, I was into it. This was my first not I only I had five dozens this week. Oh. This is my first not dozen, but not because of the quality. The quality is amazing. I was super about. I thought it had this really cool sort of like uh, it smells like it's going to be like confectionery sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. on the palate, it's, it's got this nice, mm -hmm. exactly where yeah. I was going with it. And then at the end, I was like, wait, is this a Chardonnay? And if this is a Chardonnay, this is my favorite Chardonnay we've had in the show. So I've had <laughs> okay. my best Shiraz okay. and my best Chardonnay okay. within four wines. 
Chardonnay. Brendan, what variety does that make it sound like? Uh, it makes it sound like Chardonnay. <laughs> makes it sound like Chenin Blanc to me. Yo, yes, oh, you dude. Yes, yes. And I wanted to pay fifty-five for this. I had sixty. A twelve for ninety dollars. I thought this was sick. Maybe your favourite Chardonnay is a Chenin. We yeah, shall maybe see. Maybe I just don't like Chardonnay, as it turns out. Lachlan, that'd be very good value, Shannon. That'd be very good value, Shannon. It's Chardonnay, dude. It's Chardonnay. It's from the range. Is that from the range? That's uh, that's oh, Alpha Box and Dice. Re is that Wendy? Myself. That's Wendy. This is the Wendy Alpha Box and Dice. I hey. had a bottle of this literally two nights ago. That's the wine! Dude, no shit. All right, so uh, two nights ago, I was hosting a quiz night down at Big Shed Brewery, and Brendo came down, and he was like, try this wine, and it was this wine, and we were both like, the fuck? This sucks. That's incredible. No offense, guys. No, no, no. Yeah, but it, like, it was genuine. There was something going on. I've, no, but like, not, I don't even need to say no offense. I've just called it my favorite Chardonnay I've ever had on the show. Like, this is killer. This but is killer. What the hell's going on there? Might have been been open too long, might have it been oxidized. It was a freshly opened bottle. The bottle bottle variation. Bottle, bottle, variation. bottle variation. Stored badly, something. Like, uh, but well, the way we tried it, uh, direct from the uh, supplier of this winery. Yeah, so sometimes always in Alpha Box, same peeps. Yep. That is unequivocally amazing yep. and significantly different from what, you, what tried. you tried. That is day. amazing. That's yeah. wine number five. Another yes, another dozen, dozen for me. me. Uh, I went six. I really liked it though. Uh, it has some Sicilian vibes to me. It's got some Nero Davila vibes to me. It's so weird having drunk as many wines as we have on this show. Like, I get a, uh, for some reason, I'm just like, this tastes Italian. And if you're like, why does it taste Italian? There, I'm like, yeah, I've got no thing. fucking idea. There is, there is a thing, there is a thing. You it's, can taste once you do it It's enough. got this kind of savory, like, rusticity. rusticity, and it's got tannin, uh, it's got brighter acid. That's just kind of what just Italian screaming at you like, oh! <laughs> All right, I had 55 and 12. I had, I had 50 and 12. I had uh, 38 and 6. 45, 45. Split, the diff. split the diff. Minim! Minim. I reckon it's gonna Really? Yeah. There we go. Nice. We on. We on. Uh, this is Victorian. I think this is Heathkit. Marlesburg Renat. Renat. Landsburg Renat. Landsburg. Well Where's Landsburg? Oh, thanks, man. It means so much coming from you. Hey, look. <laughs> the king of Australian reds. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, really hands off. Um, a little minor sulfur addition. <laughs> Love that acidity. And yeah, the whole bunch is, of things there, which made me think fun. Gamay. Uh, this is a cracking one. Yes, it's yeah, Pyrenees fun. from the Pyrenees. Wow. From? Hey, good, uh, good country for growing grapes. Oh yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, so just a lot. Lee's a little bit of season punch and work. Uh, Twenty five parts of sulphur. Hands off, good stuff. Uh, fuck yeah, this is a this is a no brainer. Forty five bucks. Oh, you can, that's that punch is above its weight. I reckon in, in the class of like Aussie that, that hits like Vale quality. Now, if you thought it was impressive that I called the first one a Shiraz oh, from here we Australia, go. Here we go. wait until you hear me call the producer and the exact wine that this one is. Okay. okay. This is okay. Golden Oaks Soft Fruity White, and this is Goon, my friends. What the fuck are we doing here? So that there yeah. is quite possibly my top three wines I've ever tried on this show. <laughs> if this and, is serious? Dude, yeah. I would yeah. love for this to be good. That would be the best yeah. thing ever. Yeah. I wanted two bottles of 30 bucks. I'd have 12 and I'd spend 60. Uh, I had one for four dollars seventy-five, and I want to stress that's great. I love this wine. Like, don't <laughs> yeah. get me wrong, I drink a lot of this wine, but yeah, I just thought it was good. What do we got? Oh wow! How many liters of it do you get for? Beaujolais Blanc. There you go. Beaujolais Blanc. Flying fish. Utterly amazing. Utterly amazing. Well, there you go. Well done. Call on a shot. Yeah. What a sleeper of a wine. I think hard to do these and then have that. Because okay, you put it with that first. You should put that first. Has the absence of everything and that's hard to be able to see when we've just been given so many blockbuster wines. Yeah. Um, wine amazing. lineup. I mean, you've called that your favorite I, wine. Yeah, I know, I know. Goon, which makes it really I know, I know, but you guys, like it's it's majority votes. It's all right, it's all right. I know what's coming. <laughs> I know what's coming home with me tonight. And that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah not me. Fair enough. Um, that one, uh, <laughs> yeah, Shiraz, yeah, well King done. Well Shiraz, done. Fuck yeah, deserving as well. Cracking God, it has been deserving. so long since I've had a win on Bride. Yeah, it was good, it was good too. Well done. Like that was that was left of center, so you picked that well. You read the the late You know what, this isn't this isn't me just going Aligato for a bit. I actually thought through that was like, I think that's a shirt. I'm so happy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the shrink can continue next week. It's not going to. Thank you so I'm much for joining us. Ball. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We'll be back next week with six more wines. Ciao. Bye.